Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and the first topic we're going to talk about for the inaugural episode is the Arizona Cardinals draft class. Now, to take a look at this class from a data perspective, you have to start out with the first pick of the draft, Hassan Reddick. I love, 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 love Hassan Reddick. I've been talking about him all the way back in October. Super fast, super explosive type of player. I didn't exactly think the hype would get to this point where he's being taken 13 overall of the draft uh, after uh, an amazing senior bowl. Uh, and he is a fun player to watch. He is very, very fun to say the least. Uh, in terms of just his overall uh, production, which was kind of the main thing, I wanted to talk to you today is just a data perspective. Uh, he had 88.32 solo tackle market share compared to edge rushers, Sam linebackers, 4-3 Sam linebackers specifically. He had 65.08 in terms of sack market share and 90.83 in terms of tackle for loss market share. He got into the backfield a ton and got those running backs on the ground. And overall, when it comes to his age uh, and his uh, production for his, uh, for his schedule, it was really, really impressive. And as an athlete, it becomes even more impressive. He was 82.82 in terms of explosiveness, 93.07 in terms of speed for his size, and 81.96 in terms of flexibility for his size. Now, I'm not exactly 100% sure how Arizona is going to use him, if they're going to use him as a linebacker and put Dion back at safety, or if they're actually going to it's really hard to say what you're going to use of him because he's kind of a Swiss Army type of player. But based on the data that I've done and run him through, he would be much better served as just a 4-3 Sam linebacker who you blitz and you get the most out of him as a pass rusher versus just a pursuit linebacker role. Because as a pursuit linebacker, he graded out more like a Scott Fujita type or uh, DeAndre Levy, uh, for example. So I, I really like the pick. I think it's a little high for him, uh, but I love the player, so I, I can't really fault him too much for this pick. I, I kind of understand what they're trying to do. Uh, and to get to the next pick, which is another pick that I, I like. I don't love it, but I like it in uh, Buda Baker out of Washington. Uh, he is a very, very fun safety to watch. In terms of solo tackle market share, he had 57.19 out of 100. Uh, interception market share, which is only is only low mark actually, is an interception market share. He had 44.75 out of 100 in his career, and 80.63 in terms of pass deflection market share. Now this is where the only issues show up for Buda Baker because showing the graph here of him compared against all the great safeties in the last 20 plus years, he didn't hit any of those areas. He didn't have elite solo tackle market share. Uh, he didn't have elite interception market share. And he didn't have elite pass deflection market share. And when you actually compare him to Tyron Matthew, who people compare him to a lot, uh, Tyron Matthew w had much higher solo tackle market share uh, compared to Buda Baker. Uh, but when you look at his age and you look at his athleticism, and this is just his athleticism next to Eric Weddle, by the way. They're very similar athletes, Eric Weddle and Buda Baker. So he's a tremendous athlete. He's super fast, super flexible. I don't think he's going to be a special, special player. But I do think that the potential is there for him to be a very, very good, uh, very, very kind of breakout level player. Like he could be like a TJ Ward type of player for them uh, based on all of this stuff, based on his age and based on his production. So I think that's a really great pick for them. Uh, and then the next pick is Chad Williams from Grambling State. I love me some good. As soon as I, I had no idea who he was until the Senior Bowl. But as soon as I put on the film of Chad Williams at the Senior Bowl, oh my gosh, he's, he's such a tough player, uh, such a fast player. And that's just how it showed up in testing. He, it, just in terms of his explosion, he was 87.62 in terms of explosiveness uh, and 88.84 in terms of speed for his size and 76.18 in terms of flexibility for his size. He's a tremendous athlete. And on top of that, his production for his level of competition he had 87.53 out of 100 in terms of uh, market share production. Uh, and his age isn't too bad either. Uh, so he, I think he has the makings for a very good starter. And there is potential based on his production at that level and based on his athleticism that he could develop into a starting wide receiver or better. He could become the number one wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. Now he's not going to be like Larry Fitzgerald, 
nobody's going to be like Larry Fitzgerald for a while. But I do think he has the tools uh, to at least be a complimentary guy to Larry and eventually take the mantle from Larry down the road because he, ha- he plays with that chip on his shoulder, man. Uh, he's, he was a very, very fun player to watch. Uh, and then next up we get to Dorian Johnson. He's a guard out of Pittsburgh. Uh, he was a guy that on film I really enjoyed watching his film. Uh, he was one of the higher grades I gave uh, to a guard uh, was Dorian Johnson. The testing wasn't as kind to him. Uh, he had 78.38 in terms of explosiveness for his size, which is very good, by the way. But his speed was 37.82 out of 100, and his flexibility was 6.25 out of 100. And based on all the data stuff that I've collected since 1999, uh, there hasn't been a single long-term starting guard with as poor of a flexibility score as Dorian Johnson has had. But I'm going to give some hope here. Uh, again, I like his film, and he has such a high amount of uh, explosiveness. You know, 78.38 is a really, really high number for that, that he could be an outlier. He could be that guy that even though there hasn't been a guy like him before, there, there also hasn't been a guy who had as high of explosiveness as Dorian Johnson, but had as poor of a flexibility score. So I think there's a chance that he could make it just based on that alone. And again, I do like his film. But I would say he's a bit of a risk, a higher risk kind of place, especially when you have Nico Siragusa and you had a bunch of other guards that were on the board at that time that I felt uh, would would have been less of a risk. And also guys I liked on film a little bit more. They could do a couple, you know, they could do more things on film. Uh, So Dorian Johnson is one of those guys that I, I like the player. I don't necessarily think it's the best value based on other players available, but it could it, it could work out. Uh, then next up, we have Will Holden, uh, offensive tackle out of Vanderbilt. His film was okay. I wasn't as impressed with him on film, uh, and testing-wise, it wasn't the greatest. He was 61.27 in explosiveness, 10.79 in terms of speed, and 41.16 in terms of flexibility for his size. Just to break this down for you, that means that his best quality is explosiveness. He could fit in a ZBS scheme because in zone blocking schemes, you're not asking them to do a bunch of, uh, you know, crazy things. But he is a bit of a risk. Uh, he just is that type of risk when it comes to his speed and his flexibility. He's going to be a liability. I mean, there's no ways around it. He's a very scheme specific player who can work in a certain scheme. But he's not a player that you can just put out there and he's going to hold his own without some help. Uh, So he's not exactly the best pick, especially with, again, other players available. Storm Norton, uh, Max Rich. Uh, There was lots of tackles uh, that were there that they could have taken that would have been better values and would have been better long term. Uh, just from a data perspective. Uh, then, of course, you got TJ Logan. Uh, TJ Logan, here's the best thing I can tell you guys, Cardinal fans, is the, the Saints overpaid for Alvin Kamara because TJ Logan brings the same amount of production as Alvin Kamara. Uh, TJ Logan was about 26.61 out of 100, which is not incredible. But they're similar players in terms of how they're used. They're change of pace backs, they're committee backs, they're guys that you have in a rotation, but you never make a starter. You never make them the full-time back. And I love this fit with TJ Logan because he's an impressive athlete. Uh, he was uh, you know, 83.21 in terms of speed and 90.32 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, he Again, he's never going to be a long-term starter, but that speed and flexibility is something that is a good matchup uh, there's great matchup ability with that pick. So uh, I, I feel like you got Alvin Kamara like back in terms of just potential, in terms of how good he can be, and you got him at a, a later round. So I think that's a good pick for them. Uh, they already have a ton of backs on the roster. Again, they could have gotten better value in terms of getting offensive linemen and stuff like that, but I can't fault the player. I do like Logan on film, and I do think that there's potential. He, he could be a really good change of pace back and a really good receiving back out of the backfield. Uh, if, you know, God forbid, David Johnson gets injured, I think TJ Logan could come in there and, and do some of the receiving uh, stuff uh, and, uh, and help out in that regard. And then the last pick, uh, Jonathan Ford, safety out of Auburn. Uh, Jonathan Ford is a guy I've talked a ton about. 
uh, about everybody, not everybody pays attention to me, but Jonathan Ford is a very impressive safety from Auburn. He's basically a poor man's Jarrell Peppers. You know, that's really what he is. He plays a similar role in Auburn's defense. Uh, he is, he comes down in the box at times. Uh, he rushes the passer occasionally. Uh, he gets in the backfield and, and zone, you know, kind of for run blitzes and stuff like that. He does a little bit of that. He does a little bit of uh, slot coverage, man coverage. He does a little bit of everything. Uh, again, his production is not terrific. By any stretch of the imagination, this is just his production right here. And very similar to Jabril Peppers, his interception market share is not great. But he does have 97.56 percentile speed for his size. And that speed shows up on film. I think what you can look for with Jonathan Ford is a safety that can step in and, and do his job and be a big impact in terms of the slot nickel dime packages a guy that can contribute in those areas and honestly he could end up becoming a starter um, overall with the Arizona Cardinals draft I would I don't like to give out grades but I would say you got some good players uh, you replaced some of your big needs you, know, you lost Tony Jefferson so you go out and you get uh, two safeties that could legitimately start for Tony Jefferson and give as good or better impact at that position in Buda Baker uh, or Jonathan Ford um, so you did that right you got Hassan Reddick I think he's a great impact player in terms of as a Swiss Army knife uh, pass rusher you got Chad Williams who replaces what you lost with Michael Floyd but I think Chad Williams is gonna be better than people expect and you got Dorian Johnson but the prop the main problem that I see with this class is you didn't really do anything to to build on the roster you already had you simply just replaced some of the things that you lost and I don't like draft classes that much I don't like cl draft classes where all you're doing is you're trying to replace everything that you lost because uh, you don't really go anywhere you you know your your wheels are spinning but you're not going anywhere and this was kind of what this draft class was to, to the to the Cardinals uh, they missed out on some opportunities to get a quarterback. I know that's what most Arizona Cardinal fans are complaining about, which and I completely understand. Uh, but this draft class could have been better. They could have taken advantage of, of the opportunities they were given. They got some players that I think are going to be good players. I think this isn't a terrible draft uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think that all they did was replace players that they lost and didn't really build much onto the roster as they could have so and this was not the best team you know this was this was uh you know they were picking 13 overall for a reason guys so um that's the one thing i worry about with the cardinals is how this turns out with them so again you know i'm jim coburn from the common man football uh youtube channel and I'm going to be bringing more of this content to this channel, uh, more draft sort of breakdowns from a data perspective. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics, and you can also follow uh, some of the blogs I do at, at uh, draftcoburn.wordpress.com. And uh, I will talk to you later with another video soon.